Hello, ladies, men, non-binary friends, girls, gays, and theys. Welcome back to What Knitting Taught Me. My name's Caleb. I'm so happy you're here. You can find me on Instagram as Caleb9513. You can also find me on Ravelry as CalebJeffrey13. Not as active on Ravelry as I would like, but there's that. I use it more as pattern storage. Hello. I'm so glad you're here. Um, I... Eskimo says hello too. He does not like being held. Whoa! Sorry. I'm still worrying about cat consent. Um, <sighs> child. I tried to. Friend, let's not. Here. You want to say hello? This is Eskinor. He will let me hold him maybe twice a day. Um, and he hates it the entire time but he has this collar on him that I'd like to take off while I'm recording because it's so loud. Do you feel naked? Okay, bye. Eskinor, there's Beth, there's Baxter, and Ivy's just right over here too, being a good girl. Larry is being an agent of chaos somewhere behind me. Um, I apologize in advance for animal noises, but they live here. They're here more often than I am, so, um, especially as of late. Anyway, my shirt says, not your average mom. If you've read the book Holes, excuse me. If you've read the book Holes, you are familiar with the character, Mr. slash Dr. Pendansky. Um, he's like their group counselor. Not a good person, spoiler alert, but, um, we read that book, um, we read it in fifth grade. When I teach fifth grade, I read it, and my first class called me mom because they reminded me of Dr. Pendansky, and so I bought this shirt that said, not your average mom, because I'm not your average mom. Um, anyway, welcome. I think I've said that already. Uh, a bit of an outline for today because um, I've got quite a bit to talk about. I'm not going to ramble on as much as I usually do, but I've got a finished object to talk about. I have whips, I have plans, and I also have um, a segment about like my degree because I uh, know a lot of folks are interested in what I'm doing with my degree. Currently, I'm a teacher, a third grade teacher in Kansas City, where I live. Um, and right now, education in the United States, especially from the perspective of classroom teachers, is really, really, really prevalent and um, deteriorating. So I wanted to talk about like my job, I guess, but then also I'm working on my doctorate towards uh, a doctorate in education and curriculum and teaching at the University of Kansas. So. I wanted to kind of show you like what's it like to be a doctoral student um, and kind of how my days work around that. Um, so yeah, we're gonna get started. Um, first, I'll talk about a finished object. Oh, there's the cat, cat collar. Um, and I'll post it, I'll put a picture maybe. You can go look at a picture on my Instagram because I don't know that I'm gonna edit this. Um, but this is the sweater I was working on last time. I honestly do not remember if I mentioned that I was working on it or not. I think I did, but this is my Wrong Side Pullover by Maxim Sear. And it is done. Spoiler alert, I love everything about it except one thing, and I'll talk about that here in a second, but um, the yarn I used for the body is La Vieta May Cori Confetti in Graybo number two. Initially, I was concerned that I did not buy enough yarn, but you know what? I bought just enough yarn, and it turned out really, really well. Um, this is a DK weight yarn. Um, not gonna pretend that it's a worsted weight yarn, even though it's called Cory Worsted. 
the worsted more refers to the way that it's spun. Um, but in a DK sweater, uh, I average about seven and a half balls of yarn. So that's what uh, every two is, is, oh, oops, there we go, sorry. Murado Black Warriors by Paper Mate, best pencils. Is that gonna focus? Whatever. Um, always have one, I guess, in my hair today is where, where it is. Nope, it's gonna roll down. Usually if I'm wearing my glasses. I used to have glasses that I could just poke it in there. That's distracting. Wrong side pullover. Max does a fantastic job with all of his patterns. I've been kind of on a Max kick lately. Um, I recently knit his, um, oh my god, oh no, oh yeah, <gasps> maybe that's why it's not fitting the way it's supposed to. Um, I recently knit his once in floral sweater, but the complaint I had about this, oh my god, I'm so, wow, okay, maybe that's why it's because the short rows are literally, you put, God, I'm, oh, all right, focus. The complaint that I had with the sweater was that right here, the fabric, it felt like there was some extra fabric. It's because there was, that I just figured out just now, looking at the short rows and thinking about how I constructed them um, in the pattern. So, I use German short rows, and I don't know, can you see, can you see there, there they are? Do you see how the arch is not as, oh, sorry, <laughs> the arch is not as steep right here, or as, there's not as many columns? It's because that's where the short row ends. And friends, that means all the extra fabric is back here which I had marked as the front because I always mark the back of my sweater with like a crocheted remnant. AF tracking lock, what does that mean? Autofocus, there we go. Um, I always mark it with a crocheted remnant, but I guess now that crocheted remnant is the front. Oh hell, now we gotta try it on. Please hold. I get really hot and I've been tidying, so that's why I didn't have this on to begin with. Oh, son of a bitch, what do you know? So I've been wearing this sweater backwards and I have no complaints. Next. tried to pull this sweater off, but then I ended up pulling my luscious locks that I washed last night. Um, getting it cut on March 25th. I'm just gonna like shorten it a bit because you see that it's uneven. Um, so I'm gonna get the dead ends trimmed and then add some more texture up here on my new growth. But I was talking to my hairstylist. Her name is Emily. And um, she was like, because this is the first time I've had a haircut here that wasn't like super cuts. And I don't think I've even been here to a Supercuts. Um, great clips, great clips. Um, and so I was talking to her and, and she was like, when was the last time you had like an actual haircut? November of 2019. What? Can't believe it either. Anyway, I have ADHD. I get distracted pretty easily. Um, so let's talk about whips. This was my phone. Let's talk about whips. Um, one of the things I am trying to do is not only work through my stash, because I have an insane amount, nope, not insane, trying not to use those words. I have a very large stash and 
Um, I am in a financial place where I really should not and cannot be buying yarn. Um, so I am knitting through the beautiful stuff that I've acquired. But I'm also wanting to finish up works in progress sigh that have accumulated um, as, as time has gone on. So first I wanna talk about, the cat is trying to play with my pencil. Uh, first I wanna talk about um, what's what I've been knitting on um, that is a whip. And then I'm gonna talk about the thing that's bringing me so much joy. Um, do you want on my lap, sir, or are you gonna scream? Yes, you're gonna scream. Um, okay, so let's talk about whips, okay? And the ones that I'm working on, and then I'll show you ones that need to be finished. Um, so, working on and are almost finished are these tube socks from Frankie Gray Fibers. And I started these, they're on, to, they're on a circular two at a time right now. I'm gonna take them off and do, did you see what I just did? Take them off and do um, DPNs here. Um, but they're on a size four. I'm gonna talk a little bit about needles at the end, um, but these are an interchangeable set that I have. They are the Knitter's Pride Zings. 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 Zinks, zinks. Can you tell I've been teaching phonics and I'm trying really hard to not be lazy about my articulation? Zings, not z, zings. Anyway, um, this is one of the Scooby Doo colorways that they dyed up over the summer. I think it's called um, something gang, like let's go gang or like zoinks or whatever. But you can, I think it says Scooby-Doo really, really nicely. Um, this is a DK weight sock, so I'm knitting it on size fours. Um, I cast these on. I got the tube from Frankie Gray, so Jody cranked the tube. I believe it's 48 stitches. Uh, I do have an Earl Bacher Gerhardt sock machine um, that doesn't get as much love as it deserves but I have a 72 and a 64 stitch cylinder. So that was nice to get a 48 stitch. Uh, I think that works really well for DK weight yarn. Um, but yeah, I cast those on uh, during the summer when I was teaching summer school because I was teaching in the afternoons, I taught the kids how to knit. Uh, my kids were able to get through the prescribed curriculum pretty quickly in summer school this past summer. So we often our afternoons were enrichment um, of the knitted variety. So I brought those to work on while they were knitting and summer school ended and I haven't touched them since. So, but they're just, I have two rows of the toe. I do what I call a three, two, one toe, which is you decrease around, knit three rows, you do that once then you decrease around knit two rows, you do that twice, and then you decrease around and knit one row, you do that thrice, and then you decrease every round until you get to about like 12 or so um, stitches that you then Kitchener shut, um, that you then graft shut. Um, Kitchener is the name of the technique, not the actual, of, of a technique of grafting, but the, the technique is grafting. Anyway, that's that. Um, <clears throat> socks are kind of my bread and butter, or they were, um, especially when I first got back into knitting because I was a college student and um, fingering weight yarn and a pair of socks provided a lot of knitting time for not a lot of investment. Plus, you make socks. So I do like knitting them by hand. I don't do it as often now that I have the, the machine, but this is a pair of socks I cast on. I think these were the last pair of hand so hand knit socks I cast on before I got my machine. Um, but it's just a plain three by one sock. I hope that's focusing with a garter stitch heel flap and gusset. Garter stitch heel flap and gusset. Um, 
it looks like I did a box heel of some sort for the heel turn. And yeah, these are knit on um, 1.5 US, which is a 2.5 millimeter needle. I am a DPN girly. I love DPNs. I actually, uh, once the decreases are done on sleeves of sweaters, I will usually go to DPNs um, just because I move faster on them. Um, the yarn that I'm using is uh, Mondim by Retrosaria Rosa Pomar, and it's a red color. <sighs> Gross. Um, oh, I do have the ball band. Um, does it have a color? Nombre. Tu nombre. Um, color number three, I believe, or maybe color three zero, color three zero three, literally on the price tag, <laughs> three zero three. Um, I like this yarn. Uh, you'll see another whip in this yarn here in a moment, but these are just kind of like a when I feel like it, I'll knit on these, and um, eventually they'll get done. My socks, like I said, pretty transportable, and now that I have the machine, uh, because I can also do heels and toes on the machine, I taught myself how to do that. Um, if it's like a vanilla sock, like just stockinette, I'm not gonna knit that by hand, unless it's like super, super, super special. Um, so in the future, the yarns that I want to do like pattern socks or the socks that I knit by hand are going to be pattern socks, like a three by one rib or um, color work or texture. I am, once I put some more love and attention to my machine, I do want to get a ribber attachment for it because honestly ribbed socks are my vanilla sock. I like the fit of them a lot more than just stockinette. So that's one sock whip, or two sock whips that are, um, the one, the tube is really close to being done. The red ones just need a second sock. There's this, this one uh, was a buddy knit, is a buddy knit with my mom. I'm not sure if she's finished hers. Um, or not, but I these are a pattern by Tracy Miller of the Grocery Girls. The cats are behind the camera doing the most, so apologies if they are doing the most. Uh, anyway, I think these are called the called the jukebox socks. Oh, those are so pretty. Why am I not finished with these? Damn it. Like I said, they're by Tracy Miller of the Grocery Girls, um, and they're in Frankie Gray fibers. Love me, Frankie Gray. Um, it's hard to say. I think Frankie Gray is my, I know Frankie Gray is my favorite for like Speckle, um, Dying, Lobby and Ame is for like, I love their saturated colors, as you'll see here in a minute, and Farmer's Daughter, I love love the um, wool that they use. So like if we can get an amalgamation of the three, it'd be my perfect yarn. Um, like, God damn, there is so much hair in my mouth. Anyway, Frankie Gray Fibers. This is, the main color is like a steely blue gray. Um, I don't think you can get this color right now. Oh, this is from when it was um, to the Max Yarns, uh, but it's called S Tracy's Striped Socks. Um, and I fucking love stripes, y'all. I'm in my stripes era, I think, because everything I buy, I'm like, oh, stripes, stripes, would be so cute in stripes. Um, so these are striped, and then there is uh, duplicate stitching for the hearts. 
like I said, my mom and I are both knitting these. This is the right sock. I don't know if, in, I think in the pattern it has you do the heart on the back of the heel flap, but I did it on the side uh, so that I could have a right and a left. And I know that there is a reasoning behind the way that I have done the color sequence in the hearts, but for the life of me, cannot remember. Um, I guess it would be like the heart is the color of the stripe that's next. And then that one is up here because uh, it'll be the next color. No, it's not. I'm doing the reverse. Um, but anyway, uh, that's the first sock. You can see. Hey, the internet's going to think that you two are fighting. Does that not sound excessively violent? There, that'll distract him, hopefully. This is still the first sock. I'm not doing anything to combat the jogs. If anything, I'm pulling it too tight. Um, it doesn't matter to me. It looks like when I cast these on also, I cast on flat because I, like I said, like knitting on DPNs. Uh, so it's just easier to cast on flat, knit a couple of rows, and then I'll seam that up before these are done, or maybe not. It gives you some extra stretch there. Um, God, those cats. Anyway, um, jukebox socks, those are my stripes. Beautiful, beautiful. Chaos is ensuing around me. Um, hopefully those get done sooner rather than later. Baxter's gonna try and jump on the back of this chair. Hun, do you need some help? He's not doing so great with his legs. Um, anyway, also, bags by Amy Beth, Fat Squirrel. This is the State Fair bag, sock size. This is my, I'm a fucking ray of sunshine, sock size bag. And this one says, Fresh out of fucks. Also sec, sock size. Um, oh, I have a scrap in here, cool. Um, I guess I can talk about this real quick. My dad is dying yarn. Um, and I will put a link to his shop down below. Um, go follow them on Instagram. They are the Yarn Garden where, or no, not the Yarn Garden. Yarnaculture, where creativity grows. Uh, my dad is a, a horticulturist, a uh, master gardener person, so flowers are his thing. But this is his color, black rose, I believe. And it's stunning, absolutely stunning, this dye technique that he used. I'll put a picture here, I guess. I guess I am editing this, of um, a hat that I knit with this color and holy shnikes, folks, it is beautiful. So go check out his store. Um, last sock whip that I have is um, a, another tube sock uh, that the tubes were cranked prior to me having a machine. So I actually have quite a back stock. I really hope those cats are not ruining this audio. Um, they're playing and they live here, so I'm not gonna stop them, but like, it sounds like a war back there. Um, anyway, uh, so I have a back stock of two, a backlog of tubes that I need to get through, but this is uh, coloring book yarns. Coloring book, I don't know if they die anymore, they certainly don't do like shop updates. I think they're probably just a die to order kind of outfit now, but probably the most stunning self-striping dyer I have ever seen. Their colors are so saturated, their lines are so crisp. Um, and I have quite a bit of their yarn. Actually, 
anytime they would update their shop, I would just buy whatever they had because it was so like beautiful. Um, so yeah, have quite a bit of that that you'll see. Um, like I said, I want to knit through a lot of what I have. Sorry, I'm just making Baxter a little cove over here. Homework. Um, so he can make it out. There you go, buddy. Um, when I knit tube socks, what I do is I get just a tube. Um, if I haven't cranked them, if I've cranked them, they will maybe have a folded hem and then a toe. Uh, and then I will go in and just hand knit the heel because I have a very specific heel that fits my foot well. Um, and I like to do it in the yarn, especially self-striping, because then it makes this really cool bullseye. So yeah, this is Coloring Book, book Yarn. It's an 80-20, right? Which is my favorite sock base. Yep, 80-20 Merino Nylon, uh, Superwash in the colorway Night Owl. I have no idea about the availability of this, about how often it is procurable or not, but I have a first sock and, ooh, that's where that is. You guys know about these? I love Threaded Maple. I'm gonna do a whole episode, I think, on needles, maybe, because, um, I'm not buying yarn, but that doesn't mean I can't buy needles. Uh, and I have the, well, it's just right here, thread and maple needle binder organizer. Um, this is also embarrassing, but I'm never without. Uh, yikes. Do you ever like sit and think about like, how much money am I holding in my hand right now? It's disgusting, truly, how, how gluttonous I am in this industry, but it brings me joy. Low power mode. It brings me joy. All right, anyway, back to what I was fucking talking about, my God. Um, I just have a heel on this one left, and then it'll be done. So I have, like, two pair of socks that could be done pretty stinking easily if I just buckled down and got them done. And then that's two projects out, right? Uh, needles I use are again, the Knitter's, Knitter's Pride Zings, 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 not Zings, Zings. Um, and the heel, when I pick up a heel, I do it in size one. Um, which is a 2.25 millimeter needle. Um, all right, those are all of my sock whips that I have right now. Um, I did get some Ba yarns in the mail. Um, and I'm also a part of Farmer's Daughter Fiber and uh, her like yearly sock club. The Ba yarns was just like an impulse buy because the pattern that the yarn goes with is stunting and I also am a member of Trilogy Yarns Broadway Playbill Club because it's just fun and if I'm not like buying for big projects I can at least like every month get a fun surprise in the mail of things that I've already paid for so there's that um before I talk about what I've been working on, I'll show you one more whip that is in rotation that will be next once I finish this and then a secret knit that I have going. Um, that's also almost done. Uh, this is another Amy Beth Fat Squirrel bag. It's probably my favorite one of hers that I have. Um, it's the Aaron, size, Aaron sweater size bag. Um, and the sweater that's in here is the hyphenated sweater. I don't know who it's by. I guess I could look, but here it is. Wow. So truth be told, I was about to come on here and say, folks, 
do I frog it? But bitch, look at that. It is not getting frogged, it's beautiful. Um, so yeah, the hyphenated sweater, the yellow is La Bien Aime, um, dyed in conjunction with Retrosaria, Rosa Pomar, if I can find it. Hello, is there a tag in here? There's a cake. Um, so it's a nice, earthy, crunchy Portuguese wool. Um, but it, so it's the, the Mondine yarn uh, that is then dyed by La Bienna May in this color, I believe. Oh no, I thought it was Yellow Brick Road, but it is not. It is Goldenrod. Um, there's the label. La Bienna May, um, anyway, I'm really liking it. And then the contrast yarn that I'm using is um, Patton's Croy in just white. Now, interesting thing about that yarn choice, I didn't think it would be as big of a thing as it turned out to be, but, um, and I like it because it provides some texture, but Patton's Croy is definitely not a fingering weight. And I don't know if you can see, um, there is some puckering, but it's light and will be taken care of. Um, pro tip, if you're doing short color work repeats like this, it's really easy to get into a rhythm and make your floats too tight. So make sure, can you see Espinor right there? <laughs> He's laying on the like couch, it's an actual couch. Um, anyway. Um, make sure that your float tension is either good or put it on a big enough cord that your tension, ha your cord basically has no slack. No, what am I saying? Like the cord is the same length as the fabric that you're knitting so that your fabric isn't bunched up because I know the way that I knit, I bunch up a bunch of stitches, like load them up on the needle and then pow, 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 pow. Um, and so when you're doing that with color work, because I also knit two finger, so I'm looking like this when I'm doing color work. Um, sorry. Um, your floats are not going to be long enough. And that was the case here. So I made sure that I put it on a large enough needle, but then I was looking at it, or cord rather, then I was looking at it um, a couple weeks ago, and I was like, they're still like puckering. It's because the Patton's Croy is significantly thicker than the Mondeem, which is making for a really cool three-dimensional effect. Um, I'll hold the two strands up next to each other. Um, so I don't know if you can tell, but um, the white is certainly, certainly thicker than the yellow. Um, and it's just really cool. Uh, like I was saying, ooh, there's a mint in here. Like I was saying, um, I was gonna come on here and say, I don't know, folks. Um, when I cast this on, I was a bit, I was quite a bit bigger, um, had a larger chest circumference, and it's just a lot of knitting. It's knit on US threes, so a 3.75, nope, that's a five. A 3.25 millimeter needle. Um, so it's a fine gauge. Uh, and I have a goal, I don't know how well this is going to work out, but I have a goal this year to knit a sweater a month or get a sweater out a month. So this one was January. I'm going to have this one done uh, that I'm going to show you here in a minute, knit by this coming Saturday. Um, and then that one, the yoke is almost done, honestly. It's almost to the split for sleeves part. Um, and I have spring break in March. So I'm, I think I can probably get that done in March. 
um, and then April and May find some like bulky knit projects uh, while school is still going on and then in the summer I think I can definitely get a sweater out a month and then in the fall who knows but that's my tentative goal um, so anyway did that cat just hiss at the other one I'm learning so much about cats and their behaviors it's ridiculous anyway I was going to rip it out because it was going to be way too big, but I think it's going to be the cozy sweater of my dreams. And I know that I have enough yarn. So, uh, here's hoping that that gets done soon. Now, what I have been working on, what I have been obsessed with this past couple weeks is my Lento sweater. And I wasn't going to be like everybody else and knit one of these but there's a reason everybody's knitting one and it's because it's amazing it's the best fast it's the fastest sweater I think I've ever knit and anyway I'll show it to you isn't this so exciting um so here's my lento isn't it giving you the neon Jason from Freddy Krueger is Jason the one who wears the sweater um dreams of your life yes god boots the house mama realness um I mean that's what I see when I wear it but I am fucking obsessed this yarn is La Bien Aime in their Wensley worsted which is the companion yarn to Cory Worsted. And I got this yarn. Oh, I need to put that back with the thing. I got this yarn at Rhinebeck. There it is. And um, I'm not going to tell you how much I spent on it because it's embarrassing. But it's the Winsley Worsted. And this is, you know how they have their Helix and Felix yarn, which is a lace weight, which is stunning. And I have a sweater quantity of... Um, I just, that's going to be one of the summer projects, um, so I'll talk about it in the summer. But this is the, uh, the Helix and Felix, one of them has Gotland wool, which is, gives it a nice gray, natural tone. That's what this is, and Corydale. The other, Wensley has Wensleydale uh, and Corydale, so the base of the Winsleydale, or the Winsley Worsted, is the white, which they can then dye these stupid day glow fluorescent. Like, every time I look at this in a picture that I've taken of it, it the orange is literally gl glowing. Like, glowing mama. And so, yeah, it's glowing now. So you get these really vibrant colors on the Winsley. Uh, the blue is Sophie, and the orange is called Hella, and I just love that. I honestly want a whole sweater out of Hella, um, probably a Lento. But uh, anyway, I bought this yarn at Rhinebeck at oh, what's that event called? Um, Wool folk, wool stock, wool folk, wool and folk got there um, from Brooklyn General. And originally, when I bought it, I was in a vest era. I was in my vest era, and I still very much am in a vest era. I love wearing vests. Um, in America, a vest is um, like a sleeveless sweater, not an undershirt, like you UKans say, but, um, so I had four skeins of Sophie, the blue, and three skeins of the orange. So I had like a 75% uh, of the orange compared to the, the blue. So what I originally was going to do was knit an Argyle sweater, like traditional Argyle intarsia knit flat with the duplicate stitching um, vintage pattern, um, but I couldn't find any that were in my size, duh, um, 
and I didn't feel like writing my own pattern. So I was like, you know what, whatever, we won't do that. Um, and so I was just like, stripes, stripes, baby. Um, if I were, if I had thought about it before I started, I would have done this striping sequence this way. Right now, and what I've been doing is 10 rows of blue compared to four rows of orange, which looks really nice. I really, really like it, and I think I'm gonna have enough yarn. Um, that's why I did the sleeves, um, because I was like, I wanna make sure I have enough sleeves for the yarn, yarn for the sleeves, um, and then I'll go back and do the body, and if I have to order more, I will. The nice thing about doing stripes like that is, um, if I have to get a different dye lot, it'll probably be okay because you won't, it won't be next to um, a blue. Like it won't go blue to blue, blue skein A to blue skein B within a blue chunk. Does that make sense? Um, but like I said, I have three skeins of orange, four skeins of blue. So I have um, three to four a ratio of three to four. So I have 75% of the orange compared to the blue. And if I were thinking about it, instead of doing four stripes and 10 stripes, I should have done um, uh, eight stripes and 12 stripes or three stripes and four stripes. When I say stripes, I mean rows. Rewind. If I were thinking about it, instead of doing 10 stripes to four stripes, I would have done something that was that ratio of three to four. So either um, eight stripes to 12 stripes or three stripes to four. I'm doing it again, oh my God. <laughs> three rows to four rows or eight rows to 12 rows. And that would have ensured that like my proportion was right and I wasn't gonna end up with a bunch of one compared to the other. Um, because, and that's kind of what's happened is I'm going to have at least a skein, I think, of the hella left, which I'm not complaining about. Um, I love having leftover ska single skeins because I like get the satisfaction of having it for myself and then I can like share it with somebody else. Like, bitch, look at this amazing orange. You need a hat in it, here's a skein. You know, like that kind of thing. Um, but I, uh, this is how much I have of the skein that I did the sleeves in and I'm about halfway done with the second sleeve. So I think this will be sufficient to finish the second sleeve. Um, but that'll mean that I've used two and um, a quarter skeins of the four that I had so far. And I have, um, the way that I do it is by rows. So I know that every um, set of 14, chunk of 14, every three, so every chunk of 42 rows, um, has is about six inches and I am knitting 18 inches from the armpit to the weight or to the ribbing um, and I have six inches so I have 12 more inches to go now that I'm talking through that I should have enough um, and I'm not do you hear those cats oh my god I'm not the kind of person that will be thrilled um, if I have to do something unplanned at the end that's different from everything else. Like I'm the kind of person that like rows have to match. Um, typically um, all the cast on and bind off edges have to be the same kind of thing um, for it to be okay in my brain this it's a little different and I'm still not sure how I feel about it because it's a beautiful rolled hem but I on the first sleeve cast off bound off using Judy's or Jill's or Jenny or whoever the fuck their stretchy bind off um which is pretty 
it's obvious, but I used it on this and it fits, like it does what it's supposed to. Um, so it's not the same, but I also didn't want to do a rolled hem on the cuffs and the, the ribbing because, ew. And so then I was like, well, you can do a tubular bind off. But then I got to it and I was like, I'm not doing no fucking tubular bind off, baby. Um, not for me. So I just did that and it is what it is. We'll see if it drives me crazy. But that's the kind of knitter, like it's in the technical details for me. I am a process knitter. I love knitting, not necessarily for the product, although I do love having sweaters. Um, I just love the meditativeness of knitting. So um, because of that, I like to put some thought into it. And if my thought doesn't come to fruition, it's a little bit frustrating. And every time I put it on, it'll be, ooh, because it's not what I wanted. And for example, let me go get it. Well, no, I'll talk about it another time, but I have a sweater that is like, it's a coat, first of all. And it's like, it should be my magnum opus. Like it's gorgeous. It's stunning. It's um, Linda Evangelista. Um, but I hate it because it is not at all what it started out as. It is not at all what I intended it to start out as. And because of that, the fit's a little weird and it feels sloppy at the end. So I'll talk about that a different time. Those cats, I swear, they're friends. They're playing, they're playing, I promise. Uh, anyway, so that's my Linto sweater. Knit a Linto, babes. Knit a Linto. I'm knitting it on size nine, US nine, which is a 5.5 millimeter needle. It flies. It, the reason I chose this pattern too is because we're about to go into spring and I'm a hot person. Um, both aesthetically and um, physically, I'm a sweaty bitch. So um, I didn't want something super heavy and dense and this is perfect. It's not gonna be too thick, it's not too thin, and it's not on stupid small needles. So um, we'll see how much wear that gets and then I'm thinking like there are plenty of Lento um, quantities in my stash that will probably become lentai. So, or no, lentos. Isn't the rule like if it's a Latin root word and it ends with an S that the plural then is I? So that's why octopus is octopuses because octa is not a Greek root. It's a Latin, or it's not a Latin root. It's a Greek root. So then lento would not be lentai, it would just be lentos. But what's the etymology of lento, I wonder? I was talking about this at knit night. Lento, the name kind of puts me off because it makes me think of soup. Um, like lentil and pinto bean, like, and just meh. Names of things really um, are something I think about too, because process, like I want to enjoy the process, the tools, the whatever I have. Um, oh my God, earthquake. Um, and so um, I don't want to think of like vegetable sweat every time I pick up this sweater, but the yarn and needle combination is stunting. I'm using my zings. Um, did you hear how good that word was the first time? Uh, interchangeable size nine. I hate, by the way, the, uh, cords that Knitter's Pride and Licka, um, come with in their interchangeable sets, but Knitter's Pride has started making this mindful collection, um, which those cords are swivel cords, um, and they are, so the, the Mindful Collection is Knitter's Pride's version of um, their stainless steel yarn, or yarn, stainless steel needles, similar to the, that of Chowgu. And so they have the stainless steel cord 
as well. Um, but it swivels. So it's a swivel tip because part of the problem with the um, knitter's pride cords that usually are... Um... Hey, kitties. Psst. Hey, that's enough. You're scaring the people on the internet, right? Um, the cords are abysmal that the interchangeables usually come with because they're so stiff. And because they're so stiff when you knit, they become loosened and then you lose your stitches and it's not okay. This game changer. First of all, the price point of the Zings are amazing. I think for my interchangeable set, it was $60. Hey, you two, good lord, I'm so sorry. Um, I'm gonna go. Cats. Okay, I've captured one of them so that hopefully we can get some peace and quiet. This is Larry, he's my baby. He's my boy, he lets me hold him. And he's so loud when he purrs, oh my God. Uh, he wants to go play, so I doubt he's going to start purring. Hey, friend. Okay. Um, anyway, price point on the Zings is amazing. Um, like $60 for the set, uh, however, I am wanting to get a full set of the Mindful cords. I don't want the Mindful needles. I already have a stainless steel set in my Chow Goos. I actually probably have several by now uh, with all the extra tips that I've bought. Um, but I love, love the combination. For the sleeves, I'm knitting on Addy Cubic Turbos, whatever. I don't like Addy needles because they get too sticky with my hands. My hands eat the the um, metal. So anyway, that will be done. I have a goal. This is also stupid, but my, my therapist hasn't seen this sweater. She's seen my Once in Floral. She hasn't seen this one, and she won't have seen that one. So if I can keep on my um, sweater a month trend, um, I'll have a new sweater basically every time that I see her <laughs> and um, I'll get some of that external praise that I so desperately crave. Um, anyway, that's the knitting content that I have for today. Let me, this is going on longer than I anticipated, so I will be brief in reading and watching. Um, Okay, um, so I'll start with watching. I've been watching a lot of YouTube. Um, I'm really liking that TikTok has brought in a lot of knitters who are my age. Not that I don't love me, my OGs, Knit Girls, Volan Vine, Amy Beth Fat Squirrel, Grocery Girls. Um, I love you ladies. Um, needles at the ready, love you guys too. But y'all are about the same age, which is um, like a generation ahead of me. I relate to y'all on a very, we're very much like this a lot of the time, but uh, it's cool to see people my age um, be on YouTube talking about the things I'm excited about. So I've been watching a lot of Curia Knits. Um, uh, then there's another one. I can't think of her name or the name of her podcast, but I'll tell you next time. She's amazing. Um, and then I've been watching some of High Fiber Knits. Um, yeah, so I've been watching that. I've also started watching Ted Lasso. I know, late to the party, but um, Apple TV has a show called Shrinking, which I am really enjoying. And 
Ted Lasso is an Apple TV show and Justin Sudeikis, um, oh, Phil, our outdoor cat just jumped into the window. I'll have to go let him in here in a minute. Um, Justin Sudeikis is from, Jason Sudeikis? Jason Sudeikis is from Kansas City, so, and Ted Lasso, um, the team that he coaches, that he gets recruited from is the Wichita State Shockers football team, which is where I went to my undergraduate degree. And it's kind of morbidly funny um, that he's the football coach of Wichita State University because they don't have a football team because in the 1970s, the entire football team died in a plane crash. But it's funny now, it's not funny, but it's just like, haha, -ha, you wouldn't get it unless you knew that why it's funny that Ted Lasso coaches the Wichita State Shocker football team. Anyway, I've been watching Ted Lasso. I'm almost done with season one. Um, I've cried several times. Um, like I said earlier, schools and teaching in general are kind of a dumpster fire, more than a dumpster fire than it usually is um, in a, the United States right now. Um, both of my, I found out that next year if I'm in the same building, which that's still up in the air, um, uh, it'll be completely new leadership in our building. Um, we already have a new vice principal, our assistant principal, Larry. Larry wants Phil to come in, so let me go get Phil so Larry will stop. Been sitting on my cologne didn't realize it was there uh, if you're wondering what I smell like it's that um, anyway I smell really good Phil may join us later but he's in here now he's the cat that started it all anyway um, excitingly as I was saying our vice principal got promoted to a principal at a school that has not had a principal as of late because of reasons but um, that are unknown to me, but um, we're losing a great leader. Um, and I've been very impressed with our um, interim vice principal. Uh, she also likes Ted Lasso, and so we can talk about that. But um, Ted Lasso has this uh, ethos of like, no matter what, when things get shitty, and I know this is a very privileged perspective and like white man, cis man privilege perspective, but when things get shitty, there's always a glimmer of hope somewhere and there's always something to believe in. Um, and even when it's hard and even when you don't want to, my God, why am I crying? Um, when you are committed to that cause and um, in Whole Hog, um, you can make really shitty things turn into some really good things, and, um, yeah, so that is just kind of at the forefront of my mind with my job as of late. Um, wow, I feel emotional. Uh, I'll probably cry here in a minute when I turn this off, but we're gonna continue on for the time being. Reading, um, I am an e-reader, so on my Kindle, I've got Finlay Donovan is Killing It, there we go, um, by El Casimano. Um, it's good, it's like a, it's more adult than I thought it would be. I thought it was supposed to be like a cozy mystery, but in cozies, um, there's usually only like one murder 
and um, like you don't hear about it. Uh, it's just something that's already happened and then your sleuth comes in and they're like, I'm gonna solve this. Um, so it doesn't follow the cozy tropes necessarily, but I'm liking that. I'm about 75% of the way through. I'm hoping to finish that today. Um, also, uh, I've been wanting to read up next. I think I'll read this one. It's called An Every Morning, The Way Home Gets Longer and Longer. And it's by Frederick Bachman. It's a novella, so that means it's about 100 pages. I actually think it's closer to 70 some pages. But it's super short. Um, Frederick Bachman is the man who wrote um, A Man Named Uwe. Um, yeah, it's 76 pages. Um, and this is gonna sound stupid, but I think Frederick Bachman writes old people really well, like curmudgeon -y old people and just stories about aging and like grief. Um, and so uh, in October, uh, we lost my grandma Connie, who was like my ride or die, um, and she did. Uh, grandparent and like our relationship was really complicated and I still don't fully understand it and I don't get to have that closure and I've just really been missing her lately and so um I think by reading some Fred Frederick Bachman I might get some of that closure and some of that um uh reminders of her uh, because honestly she reminds me a lot of Uva um, in, in A Man Called Uva, and so um, I think I'll really enjoy it. Um, I know this one has a lot to do with memory loss and Alzheimer's, which is um, something that reminds me of my other grandparents um, who have now passed away, these folks right here, Hank and Klazina. Um, and so I'm sure that'll be an emotional read too, but we find connection where we can. So that's an Every Morning the Way Home Gets Longer and Longer by Frederick Bachman, a novella. And Finley Donovan is Killing It by L. Cosimano. Um, quick look into what it's like to be a graduate student right now. I'm in two classes. Um, one is quantitative research methods. The other one is um, teaching like effective instructional models. I don't know, a class that I'm sure I've taken before, but this one is just a different iteration of it. So for that, I'm reading Models of Teaching, the ninth edition by Bryce Joyce, Marsha Weil, and Emily Calhoun. Um, I, it's basically different teaching strategies. They're good. Um, they're a bit dated, I will say. Um, for example, they discuss the scientific method. And if you know anything about the scientific method, the scientific method was built around one ideology. Um, the research behind it was done in one sample group um, of white folk and um, doesn't leave a lot of room for inquiry like so just it's it's kind of an outdated practice and its origins aren't necessarily um, acceptable anymore um, because the scientific method was developed in like the 60s now we use what's called an inquiry model which is constant questioning and reflection rather than um, hypothesis observation conclusion like a, an inquiry model is more cyclical than the scientific method, um, but the inquiry model uses parts of the scientific method. Anyway, so this is all strategies. Um, I also, dissertation-wise, am reading The Science of Learning Mathematical Proofs. It's a textbook, actually, um, that was developed around the science of mathematics. Um, right now in the United States, we're going through a revolution of the science of reading, which is basically just teaching kids phonics, but like really in depth on the rules, not just like this says ah, this says uh, um, and when you see this, this means this uh, for the vowel sound, but it goes into like 
understanding syllables, vowels, um, how, how those are related to the sounds. Um, for example, we don't really teach kids letter names anymore. I mean, we do teach them letter names, but we're not as focused on like, can you say your ABCs? We're more concerned about like the sound that they make. So can you make your, um, let's see, what is it? 26 sounds plus your vowels are doubled and then there's vowel teams. So I think we're closer to like 50 some odd sounds in English that you can have probably closer to 60. Um, we're more concerned with kids knowing those and the, the rules behind that so that they can then actually read because our brains, fun thing, um, reading is the one thing in our world that we interact with every day that was completely man-made language and like spoken and written language are. Communication is innately human, but things with grammar and rules when it comes to communication, completely man-made. So our brains don't necessarily, or are not, we're not born with the like structures in our brains to comprehend reading and written language especially. So you have to, have to, have to very early build those schema. Um, that's why it's really important to read to children because they get that in their head and they can relate sounds to sounds, sounds to, to graphemes, graphemes to words, words to fluent reading. And um, anyway, there's another revolution similar to that in mathematics. Really, it's just teaching mathematics conceptually rather than procedurally. Um, but I'm reading that. Um, I'm also reading Agents of Change, How Content Coaching Transforms Teaching and Learning. My um, dissertation research so far is around teaching place value to uh, students where English is their L2 or their second language um, or third or fourth. It's not their native language. It's not their L1. Um, and so that like content coaching is like teaching teachers, essentially, coaching teachers um, on best instructional practices. So I'm reading that. Um, and then for my other class, I would say quantitative research methods. Do we see that word at the top? It says introductory statistics. Do you want to know how many pages this introductory volume is? Um, well over 840. So uh, this is not the required textbook. I will say the required textbook is actually a... Uh, something published by NCTM, National Council of Teachers of Mathematics, which is a very cool organization I'm a part of. Um, but it's a, like, why we should teach kids statistics book. But it's still a statistics class. And I don't know about you, but I took statistics in my undergrad three times. And the third time, my professor was like, here is the take home final. I don't care how you do it, just get it done. Um, and so did I really learn statistics besides like bell curves? No. So this has actually been really helpful. It's not, I'm not reading it cover to cover. Um, it is a lot of proofs. Um, like here we're talking about discrete and random sampling. Um, we've been talking about chi-squares um, uh, for lines of best fit, that kind of thing. So um, anyway been doing a lot of reading in that. And then in academia world, this is a really fun time of year because it's um, quarter one publishing season. So all of my journals that I subscribe to have come in. Um, and I think I have one more somewhere around here, but I'm a member of the American Educational Research Association, um, the National Council of Teachers of Mathematics, um, School Science and Mathematics Organization, um, Kansas Association of Teachers of Mathematics, and Kansas Association of Teachers of um, English. Are those all of them? I think so. But with several of them, especially NCTM and AERA, um, I am on a mailing list for journals. So 
uh, through AERA. Um, I'm a part of their statistical research stream, so I have the Journal of Educational and Behavior Statistics. It's about as dry as you think it is. It's like what they look like. I think that's, is that a resource page? Yeah, that's a resource page, but um, they're, I mean, they're research papers. That's, that's what academics do. Um, I have the review of educational research. This one is cool because it basically is like a synopsis of major educational research that has gone on lately. So like um, this one has stuff about um, how teaching improvisational theater can encourage bias, um, a synthesis of professional development target targeting literacy instruction and intervention for English learners. That's pretty pertinent to me, so I'm gonna make sure I read that one. I'm actually gonna circle that right now. I haven't looked through this. Um, a systemic review of student, disabil of student disability and race representation in universal school-based school, social and emotional learning interventions for elementary school students and shared book reading for Spanish-speaking emergent bilinguals, a review of experimental studies. I'm gonna read that one too. Um, educational review of research in the American Educational Research Journal. Um, this one is a bit more extensive, but same idea. Um, assessing the effect of project-based learning on science learning in elementary schools, uh, teacher prep programs and graduates growth and instructional effectiveness, so on and so forth. So those are fun. I also got in the mail my school and sci school science and mathematics journals. Um, how often do these come out? I think these come out quarterly as well. No, they come out monthly, because this is November and December 2022. Um, again, research journals. Um, oh my god. A cat just went flying upstairs. And then, last but not least, we have our practitioner journals from National Council of Teachers of Mathematics. Um, I get these once a month, and these are, I really love them. They're a bit more straightforward. They're more fun to look at. Um, and this one, this month, especially speaks to my soul because I'm getting my degree in curriculum and teaching. And this one says curriculum exploring testing, exploring testing and selecting curriculum through lesson study. So I'm excited to read that. Anyway, my phone's about to die. That's why I rushed through that. I am sorry that it took me so long to get back to you and that there was no week in my life vlog but uh that's just how it's gonna be folks i hope this felt more genuine and authentic watching back the last video i made i was like bitch you are not that stiff chill out be yourself on the internet and people will flock to you so mm, thanks for being here share 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 subscribe 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 like 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 um all those fun things tell your friends about me. Um, I hope to connect with a lot of folks on Instagram and um, grow this channel and my Instagram. So the spread of mouth, that sounds like a disease. The um, word of mouth is really helpful. The spread of information via the word of mouth, the information being me. Uh, is much appreciated. Anyway, have a wonderful amount of time from the next time I see you. Have a wonderful morning, me, morning, e, morning, afternoon, evening, whatever time of day it is, and I'll see you next time. Love you lots. Bye.